All right, folks, uh, just throwing a quick video together. I picked up this really cool knife, and it's an old one again. It's back in the 70s. Uh, I found the box to be really interesting. It's the old style that's put together with the metal tabs kind of thing. It's got a very old smell to it. It's made by Smith & Wesson, uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, back in the old days when they used to make stuff in uh, America. Kind of neat. And uh, let's just open up the box. So I, I found this and I was really impressed with the quality of it. Um, that's going to need repairing. But the sheath is fantastic. The fit and finish is beautiful. The stitching is fantastic. It's made correctly where uh, when you do put your knife in there, it's not going to uh, cut the stitching. Very high quality. Beautifully made. Very nice. So we can open it up. <clears throat> and here's the knife. Now, it's categorized as a fisherman's knife. We're talking about this thing. So it is full tang design. Fish stunner. I guess you can hit the fish on the head. Uh, really cool take on a fillet knife because it's it's pretty thick. I mean, uh, <clears throat> if I can compare it to, let's say a sodbuster, and this sodbuster is about to go to England. A matter of fact, um, uh, one of my uh, one of my subscribers contacted me and. Uh, was looking for a sod buster, so I figured, you know, why not? I mean, he supports me. I figured I'd give him a really good deal on it and send it on over to England. Um, if you can see it, and the sod buster is a very thick blade, but you can see how thick that knife is. Um, so it's not your standard fillet knife, and it doesn't bend like a fillet knife. So it's, I mean, it's a really stout blade, really cool. <clears throat> it's a really nice sod buster, very nice knife. Hey folks, uh, cool. I got a bunch of knives on the table. Just wanted to show you some cool stuff. I picked up this Smith & Wesson uh, fisherman's knife. And nice and thick, you can see. Uh, it cut some really nice fillets. Really beautiful knife. Um, all soldered up. Just gorgeous. Made in the 70s. They do a really fantastic job. Uh, it comes with a beautiful sheath. Look at this gorgeous sheath. Absolutely perfect. Really made nicely. I mean, they don't make stuff like this anymore. It's awesome. It comes from uh, be, uh, knives of benchmade quality. Knives for discriminating sportsmen. And it's the, the Smith & Wesson knives. Uh, they made all kinds of knives. Uh, they made survival knives, all kinds of stuff. You can kind of page through this catalog. They got the Bowie knife, the Outdoorsman, the Survival knife. Ooh, I'd like that one. That'd be awesome. The Skinner. I could have picked that one up. I should have. Folding Hunter and the Fisherman's knife. Really nice knives. Um, so they didn't make knives for very long. It's a full tang knife. It's got a little lanyard hole, a little fish stunner on the end. Uh, just a gorgeous knife. You know, I've been getting lots of questions from a lot of people. Um, what is a good survival knife? What is a good survival knife for $175? What is a good survival knife for $60? Um, and a lot of my favorite knives, the cheap, if you want a cheap knife, that Bear Gillis, uh, I think I said his name right, that Bear Gillis one made by Gerber is a really, actually it's better than the LMF. Um, it's, a, it's a real strong blade, it's a, it's a full tang design, and it's, uh, it, it seems to be pretty popular. You can get them for like 50 bucks, so for the price point, I would, I would recommend that. Um, so the marketing of that, the price point's really good. I like that. Um, 
but if somebody has a little bit more money to spend, I would almost um, go for the, my favorite is the Bravo 1 by far. If someone asked me, what is your favorite survival knife, hiking knife? Um, I would always go with the Bravo 1. Bravo 1 is a fantastic knife. I've customized my system where I have uh, the fire steel. I have a kydex sheath wrapped in leather. And that's my system right there. Um, real tough, won't come out. Um, fits on my belt. Uh, just a fantastic system. It'll also strap on to my PAL system on my survival pack too. Pretty cool. Um, I love the Bravo one. Uh, it's skeletonized, it's nice and light, um, and it's just really tough. You can use this blade all day and it will maintain its edge. Okay. Now, if I was going to go in my backyard and do some work, uh, my property knife is my Lawn Humphrey knife, which I find indispensable when I'm doing yard work. It's got some really nice chopping ability. It's got a little bit more length to it and heft and it just really uh, handles a lot of my yard chores very well. Um, it's a lot better than carrying a machete on your side and it can handle basically anything that when I'm doing work in my yard uh, this knife can handle it perfectly. Love it, love it, love it. Fantastic. So I generally steer people towards if they have a, a pretty penny to spend I would generally steer them towards the Bravo one or to contact Lon Humphrey and I have some videos on him and have him customize make a knife for you you can you know you could draw him a shape or whatever and say hey I want it kinda like this you know I'd like something like six inches long etc etc and he would he would work it out for you um, and uh, you get a beautiful sheath with his work um, it would cost you a pretty penny not too much um, his his prices for customized knives are really really good, in my opinion, and uh, he he does some beautiful work. Um, or if you want to just pick up the Bravo One, that's also a really good choice. All right, because if you don't like if you don't like the Bravo One shape, I mean, too bad. That's just the way it is. You can get it rampless also without this ramp right here. Um, but when it comes to customized knives, you can. There's only one knife in the world that's like this, and that's mine. And, uh, you know, so it's kind of cool. It's got the cool factor. Um, I, I really like this knife, like I said, really great. Uh, but you can, you can design your own knife, and he can try to uh, follow your design ideas. So... And Blind Horse Knives. Blind Horse Knives are also fantastic knives. They have monthly specials, and you can get some really nice survival knives from them also. So you really need to look at your system. Um, if you're more of the type that likes to carry a very large knife, um, you don't need to carry a hatchet with you. And a lot of people are like, well, why do you baton wood? Why do you split wood? And I'm going to tell you why you, why you need a knife that can baton wood. Um, I live on the East Coast. This is not the California desert. You just don't throw a log on the fire and it just catches on fire. Everything has a dampness to it and a wetness to it. If you, you can split these logs and access the dry wood and uh, you can start a fire. It, it, it uh, shows the edges of the fire. It, it, basically you get a better quality fire too. Batoning, if you're if done right, is not abuse. Um, I find that batoning with a large knife like this works better than a hatchet or an axe. You know, for wood processing. So it's something to think about. How are you going to process wood? Um, kitchen prep, all those things. You need to think about that. How heavy of a knife you want to carry? What kind of system you want to carry? Um, I prefer my Bravo 1 for hiking and all that good stuff, um, and I prefer my lawn for around the house. Uh, what a great knife. I love this knife. Um, you can see that I've made it into an, a convex grind, which I really like. It's a beauty. Um, 
So if you guys are curious and you, and you guys want a really nice knife, um, I do have some knives for sale. Um, I and if, if you're interested in those, um, I could probably give you a good deal on those. I be, I beat anything on eBay. So if on eBay the knife is fifty five dollars, uh, I will beat I beat those prices by ten percent. So that's generally my rule of thumb. So you're not going to find a better deal going through somebody else. Um, but I also sell some specialty knives. What do I mean by specialty knives? Um, if, for instance, Cold Steel only makes um, a stainless steel version of the knife nowadays, I have a few carbon steel um, models. Carbon steel is by far the metal of choice when it comes to a survival knife because it just it takes an, a wicked edge and uh, it's just really fantastic very strong and very sharp so if you guys are interested send me a PM uh, we got uh, I got uh, send me your price prices what you're looking for in a knife and I can guide you in the right direction and if I happen to have a knife of your taste I'll give you an offer on that and I also point you in the direction of some really good websites too so I'm more than happy to help you guys make a good choice um, in a knife that will suit your needs alright so y'all take it easy hope you enjoyed the video and take it easy